Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on Bulldog football from this past weekend, and we'll check in with the Ferris State volleyball and soccer teams. as They both went 2-0, but we'll start first with Bulldog football, joined by head coach Tony Anise. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rob. I know uh, this past Saturday night, Division II National Showcase game, not, not the result you wanted, but a, a great battle between two great programs. Yeah, you know, you have to give Ashland uh, the credit they're due. Um, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. So, uh, you know, we've had a, a great run in Ohio. Um, all good things come to an end, but uh, it's our first loss in Ohio over the, you know, going on our sixth year here at Ferris. So, uh, you know, it was a tough battle for us. I thought our defense played extraordinarily well. Um, we just couldn't get things going on offense, and really it's the first time we've been here where we couldn't get enough offense to win a game, and uh, I felt bad for our defense because they certainly played well enough to, to win the game for us. Let's go to some of the highlights. Uh, you mentioned the defense, uh, kind of two prolific offenses coming in, but it was a battle of the defenses on Saturday. It was. You know, uh, um, our defense was good enough, again, that, that we could win the game, but offensively we just never got it going. Uh, you know, they started out hitting a big pass, which gave them three points, and it was a, you know, they got a, a veteran quarterback, uh, Tarnowski, and he makes a great throw there. and. We sack them here, and they end up having to settle for a field goal, which is kind of a victory after you have uh, that, that long of a pass. And we were worried about their explosive plays because we knew that they had uh, great ability to throw it. You were able to move the ball uh, into Ashland territory here on your first drive and, and made some nice plays here offensively. We did. Ashland. You know, uh, the more the game progressed, the more they brought uh, pressure. And uh, I think, uh, you know, they just kind of thought, well, we're just going to shoot our, all of our bullets and see how they react. And, we didn't react as favorable as, as I would have hoped. Jahan Brown here on the ground had a had a nice game on the ground, uh, running for 75 yards in the contest. Yeah, you know Jahan was stable. Um, a lot of good things happened. We just, uh, you know, we lost a lot of hidden yardage circumstances, both off of our punt and, uh, you know, we had an interception that they called him out of bounds. Uh, that was a 40-yard difference and. They backed us up a lot, and our average start was a 19-yard line, which made it tough for us. Wyatt Ford with the 42-yard field goal there to tie it up, and the, the score kind of stayed 3-3 three to three for much of the first half. Yeah, you know, uh, I was hoping we could stay 3-3, three to three, um, but we put our defense up against it on a couple uh, circumstances. Uh, we threw an interception coming up here and uh, gave them a short field, and they eventually uh, cracked it and, and scored uh, a touchdown, and then we turned the, the next kickoff over, and uh, you know they, they they went ahead 13 to three. Here, uh, Travis Karnowski here for Ashland University had a had a nice ball game. A talented quarterback, very talented, and uh, here he just eludes uh, you know uh, Ace and, and ends up getting you know down near the goal, and uh, they end up completing the pass here. You know we were we were in great shape. Uh, we fought hard. Our, we were very competitive. Uh, here's where the turnover exists, but. Uh, you know, for the most part, our defense did what they needed to do, and we just put them, out, put them in such bad uh, situations. It was very difficult for them to hang on. We hold them to a field goal there in that short field. 13 to 3 at halftime. You come out in the second half and uh, talk about the emphasis going into the second half and what were some of the keys. Well, just try to settle in a little bit and move the ball, um, complete passes. Um, you know, we try to throw on first down because, uh, you know, Travis is a very accurate passer and. Uh, you know, he has a good handle of our offense. We just tried to make it easy on him by getting ahead of the chains. But, uh, you know, at times they brought, brought pressure and we just didn't execute. We are just a little bit off and executing the little simple things in order to, you know, get us over the hump. Obviously, with it being a, a TV game, you had the, the media stoppages, the TV timeouts. How much did that impact the, maybe the rhythm of the offensive Well, play? I don't know if it uh, impacted the rhythm. It impacts the fact that uh, young people are, are in college to, to be college uh, students and and I'm not a proponent of keeping kids uh, in Ashland, Ohio till 11 o'clock at night um, coming home and getting back to Big Rapids by 6 a.m. Um, I don't know how uh, how that can change. I know uh, you know if it's a national televised game we should have TV timeouts. I don't know how many of those TV timeouts in a, a ESPN3 game where it's Ferris State versus Ashland. I don't know the benefit of sitting around for four or five minutes. Uh, you know, after after a possession to wait for a TV timeout. So not a big proponent of it. I just didn't get the late touchdown, but uh, certainly your kids uh, never quit here against the Eagles. No, you know, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, 
we didn't think we're going to Ashland and playing uh, a cupcake. We 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 know who they are. Um, you know, their their two corners are as good as anybody in the league. You know, their nickel strong safety is a great player. So all three of those guys returning starters. Um, you know, their, their D end, who was GLIAC Player of the Week, who, well, what, deservingly uh, uh, GLIAC Player of the Week on defense, he, he's a great player. So we knew they had great defensive players, um, and, you know, <coughs> excuse me, we know they got a great uh, coaching staff led by Coach Rose, their D coordinator. So all the credit goes to them. I could, you know, a million people want to ask questions about what kind of excuses we have. We have no excuses, uh, you know. We're, we're built to function successfully, successfully under any conditions, and we failed to do it. So uh, that's just that's just on us. This week, uh, you can put that one behind you. Another tough opponent, though, coming in Wayne State uh, homecoming matchup at three o'clock on Saturday. Yeah, excited to put the last one behind us. Uh, you know, um, that's what you try to do as quickly as you can, and not let it impact uh, how you perceive things moving forward. But uh, you know, Wayne's uh, always been a, a tough program. Um, and uh, you know they do a great job, and so we know they're going to be here um, to fight hard, and uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to make uh, some improvements uh, quickly on our side of the ball, the offensive side of the ball, to be more effective. And the other thing was we weren't sharp on special teams, and so uh, that leaves defense dominating. Hopefully, we can continue to dominate um, on the defensive end. I'll just say this, you know, in the six years I've been here, going on year six, that's the most dominating defensive performance we've had. And uh, so that's really encouraging because I told the kids, you know, long run, having a dominant defense is going to help us go to where we want to be, um, you know, more so than just offense. So I'm excited about it. I was very pleased by the way our defense played, and I'm very optimistic moving forward. What do you know about Wayne State going in? Obviously a, a talented running back in Romello Brown. Yeah, Romello is a force. Um, you know, they've... Uh, you know, they, they lost quite a few uh, offensive linemen, and they're trying to find their identity. Um, they also lost uh, their best offensive lineman uh, returning. I don't know if he's, he's coming back, but uh, Tommy Richardson's a great player. And, and so, um, you know, their, their quarterback's a seasoned vet. Um, you know, Romello obviously has been a force in this league. Uh, you know, Demetrius Stinson also running back. Uh, Deontay Nicholas, those are, those are all good players. Uh, um, you know, Roberson's a great receiver. And so they've got weapons. They've got the potential to really do some good things. So our defense is going to have to be stout again. Finally, a uh, chance to play back at home. Always a, a large homecoming crowd. And for your next five at home, uh, just, just talk about playing in front of the home fans. Yeah, well. that, that's exciting for sure. Uh, just knowing that, um, you know, last year I cried uh, a lot that, you know, our, our beginning season was, was tough. And, and once we went to Grand Valley and lost last year after week six, I said, you know, coming home, we had three straight at home, and it turned our season around. Not to say our season is on a negative start, but uh, obviously, you know, getting home now and, and getting settled in and, and uh, you know, getting healthy and all those things are big factors. But I really feel like, uh, you know, we can really polish some things up. Uh, we've got great potential on this team. It's just going to be one of those things that, get some guys healthy, um, polish some things up, get our swag back and, and the confidence that we need to have for us to, to be the, the great team we're capable of being. Hey, Coach, looking forward to Saturday. Homecoming, 3 o'clock against Wayne State, and best of luck to the Bulldogs. Thanks, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update after this.